Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and this is MSFS Flight Plans. If this is your first time here, all we're interested in doing around here is finding the coolest places in the world that we can fly over, learn as much as we can about what's going on on the ground just to give us one more reason to get up in the air in the sim again and again. It's finally time for our West Virginia hometown flyover tour, which I have spent at least a week kicking around as I search for the absolute best route that I could manage. And if you've ever been through this area, you know that there just isn't all that much out here. So that was my first challenge. The second issue was that most of what is out here just doesn't look that great in the sim. And I understand why. The only people who would be flying out here are probably only doing it for the same reason that we are. They just want to check out their house from the air. But nobody lives out here. So the bottom line is, it just didn't get much love from anyone on the graphics front. Well, after I almost decided to scrap the whole thing, I figured, you know what? We're going to fly out here just because nobody does it. And as you'll see, it's really some beautiful landscape, and we'll spot a few, few cool landmarks along the way. And we will be looking at the capital city of the state, learn a little bit about the area, and even get a slight landing challenge at our destination airport. And the first cool thing we'll be doing is flying in this awesome little plane. This is the Subsonics JSX-2 from YSIM, and it may be the ultimate sightseeing plane. And let me just get it started here, because it takes a second for the jet engine to spool up on it. So we'll give it a, a second to do that. And it's definitely not the most complex or detailed plane in the sim, and it is a cinch to fly, which you guys know isn't exactly a positive for me as I like a little hassle with my planes. But check out the view from this thing. Completely unobstructed from the front, the wings are set back on the sides. The only thing I can think of that might offer more in this regard is the Optica, but that thing is so darn ugly and so painfully slow that I think I would probably pick this one first unless I need to see right down underneath it, because you know the Optica you can see down there as well. So we're leaving today from Fayette Airport, Whiskey Victor 5 Niner, which is just south of the town of Fayetteville. And it looks like this strip is run by a place called Wild Blue Adventure Company. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. Let's see if I can get this thing going yet. All right, parking brake off. We'll give it one notch of flaps. And we need to get down to the other end of the runway, but there was no parking down there because we want to take off in a southerly direction. All right, here we go. And this thing is a rocket. Look how close it sits to the ground. And there's no add-ons for this airport. There are hardly any add-ons for anything out here. And when I was looking on flightsim.to, as I always do, there were actually a ton of add-ons for cities in West Virginia. And only a handful of them would actually load up and work. And I think that they stopped working on improving those several world updates ago. But we do have one for the city of Charleston, which is the capital city, and you can tell this airport <laughs> got half grass but all we need is just this little part right here we'll stay on it you know what let's use this part as a taxiway we'll fly down the part with the stripes on it they put some lights wherever they wanted to gave us a little median there no problem so when I checked out the website for this wild blue adventure company which appears to be the only place using this strip I immediately added it to my bucket list because they do sightseeing tours in a Stearman biplane that looks exactly like the one in the sim, you know, the blue and the yellow livery. And they say you can select either a, well, let's not hit that light. I think we probably hit it anyway. You can either select a straight and level option for your flight. Good grief, these lights are... <laughs> All right, let's get back on what should be the runway here. Or you can select an aerobatic thrill ride, which judging by the reviews is just as awesome as you're probably imagining. And they've even got a menu section where you can pick out what you want to do. In fact, I'm going to add a link to that so you can see this for yourself. It's insane. I mean, there's nothing they won't do. Corkscrews, barrel rolls, all kinds of moves I've never even heard of. I don't know what is going on with this down here. All right, well, we're in a tiny little plane. We'll just squeeze between those. Look how close we are to the lights. They're taller than the plane is. All right, there is a turnaround area up here, so we'll utilize that. Wow, that's loud. All right. Well, just count this little... Runway is part of the charm of West Virginia, where nothing's quite as it should be. All right, let's get up and going here. This thing's pretty quick. It gets up to around 200 knots. And I did turn the wind off. Uh, the weather was nice. It was clear, but this thing is so light that any wind at all just makes it shake all over the place. And it does have autopilot, so we'll be using that. And if you decide you want to get this plane, one thing you'll need to be mindful of is because it is so quick, it takes wide turns on the autopilot. So I'm going to try to remember to slow down when we're taking sharp turns. 
I'm going to pull up one notch of flaps. I think we only need one for this. Oh, look at this runway. Well, all you're flying out of here is a biplane. You could probably just do it from all grass if you wanted to. Up we go. All right, gears up. Look at this view out of this thing. And look at the landscape. I have driven through West Virginia once. There aren't many places to stop out here. Most of the towns are along the western side, along the Ohio River, which makes up the western border of the state. All right, flaps up. Autopilot on. Nav on. V-speed on. And we'll come up at about 500 feet a minute to start. Oh, you know what? Let's try putting our GPS on for guidance. There we go. That'll do it. And I'm already going to start pulling the throttle back a little bit because we're taking this tight turn here. So in just a minute, we're going to cross over this river up ahead, and that is the New River, which is not new at all, being at least several million years old. And historians aren't quite sure how it got that name. Some speculate that it may not have been on the earliest maps of the area, or possibly even the surname of a settler out here back in the early days. And it's called a tributary of the Kanawha River, even though it appears to just become the river a few miles downstream. And we'll be following the Kanawha all the way into the capital of Charleston, which will be our destination. And this whole flight will be pretty short, probably be back on the ground within 20 minutes or so, I think. And in the off chance that someone watching this is actually from this area and is wondering how I knew that this was called the Kanawha River, considering the spelling has a very obvious third syllable, well, that's just how I roll. I'm about as American as it gets. I've got ancestors that go all the way back to the first settlements in Virginia down along the coast, and they eventually moved inland to become full-blown Appalachian hillbillies. So if you're wondering what's wrong with me, well, now you know. All right, we're going to stop at 3,500 feet. I think that'll be a pretty good sightseeing level for us. I just can't get over the view from this thing. I got that other little kit jet that they have, and as I mentioned in... I don't even know what flight it was. It had such extreme performance drag that I could not get over. You know what? It was the Baton Rouge flight where I mentioned that. I could not get over about 25 frames per second, even when I was flying over nothing. So I don't know what's going on with that one, but this one has no issues at all. So our first landmark is going to be this gigantic bridge up ahead that we'll see right along the Kanawha River. And there it is over there on the side. You can just see a little bit of it. That's called the New River Gorge Bridge. And they opened that monster in 1977. And at 3,030 feet in length, it enjoyed 26 years as the undisputed king of single-span arch bridges until those dang Chinese took the punch bowl away. But outside of China, it's still the longest in the world. So we'll just call that a technicality. It was also the tallest bridge in the world of its type at 876 feet above the river until 2001 when... Yeah, the Chinese, again. But each fall, they celebrate Bridge Day out here. I think it's the third weekend of October, allowing adrenaline junkies to do pretty much anything they want outside of bungee jumping, which was banned after an incident involving a group jump in 1995. Look at that thing. But so far, there have only been three deaths reported from Bridge Day jumps, and there was also an incident in 2011 when a guy attempted a wingsuit flight but didn't open his chute in time, but he survived. But the article I read said that he was paralyzed from it. Alright, just around this bend up here, we're going to look at Hawk's Nest Dam. And that was built in the 1930s as part of a diversion system to send water to a hydroelectric plant about three miles downriver through a tunnel they carved through the mountains. Well, not long after digging got started, they discovered the rock had a very high silica content, which could be used to make steel. Not wanting to waste any time, a local company awarded with the excavation contract hired roughly 3,000 African-American migrant workers for the job. And thanks to a complete disregard for their safety, managed to save a few bucks by providing no respiratory protection. Killing at least 476 workers within 12 months and possibly as many as 1,000 in the ensuing years making one of the most disastrous industrial catastrophes in U.S. history. 
I don't think he gets much fanfare because it didn't happen all at once. And here's the dam right here. And you can see it's kind of flat, but you can definitely tell there's a difference in the water levels. But this is West Virginia. So maybe they just make flat dams out here. And there's a little tourist stop right up here that you can't really see in the sim. It's right here in this spot. And it is on the Google map, and they called it the Mystery Hole. And my initial thought was that it might be something like a glory hole, which wouldn't be all that out of place out here in West Virginia. But then I thought, surely Google wouldn't put a marker on a place like that. So I checked out their site, and I think it's one of those deals where they build a structure up on the top of a... or on the side of a mountain in such a way that when you go inside of it, it looks like water runs uphill. I visited a place like that out in the hill country of Texas called the Magnet House when I was a kid, and I remember being thoroughly confounded by the spectacle. All right, down here on the right is the town of Glen Ferris, population 614. Actually, this is Glen Ferris down here. This is called Gully Bridge, and you can't really see it, but there's a little bridge right here that's a newer bridge, but originally when that was built, they named this part after Gully Bridge, which was down there. And that's spelled G-A-U-L-E-Y, not G-O-L-L-E-Y, or Y, which would also be perfectly fitting for West Virginia. And down here is Glen Ferris, and that was the site of just one house for a long time that was built in 1810. And in 1939, they turned that place into a hotel, and apparently a rather popular one, hosting renowned guests like Andrew Jackson, John Tyler, Henry Clay, and John James Audubon. And they also have another little hydroelectric plant right here. And in the sim, which we'll look at at the end, these are some falls right here that just look absolutely beautiful, but you can't see them here in the sim, unfortunately. We'll check it out at the end of the satellite map. But during the Civil War, the proprietors of that place took a neutral stance when it came to booking rooms, hosting officers and generals from both sides, though not at the same time. And they said that right across the river there from the inn are the ruins of an old Union Army fortification called Camp Reynolds, which unfortunately we can't see any of that in the sim. And the only pictures I could find online were just the place marker sign, so I don't know if there's any structures left down there at all. All right, coming up just ahead, we'll see the towns of... Smithers and Montgomery and I'll give you guys a second to guess what my first thought was when I saw those names Smithers will be on the right side of the river Montgomery's on the left Montgomery's the one we can see there we're going to kind of fly over Smithers fans of the Simpsons might make the connection that Mr. Smithers is Mr. Burns adoring assistant and Mr. Burns first name is Montgomery so of course I had to see if there was any connection to any of that which there's not but I did discover that Mr. Burns' full name is Charles Montgomery Plantagenet Schickelberger Burns. So I'm glad I took the time to look into that. And both of these towns down here were built to support the local coal mining industry, and both have been bleeding residents since the 1980s. And of particular note is that Montgomery down there to our left was the home of West Virginia University Institute of Technology from 1895 all the way up until 2017 when it was relocated to Beckley which is about 15 miles south of our departure airport. But that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Out here in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. It looks really good. Nice little riverfront town. All right, these next towns up here are going to be Pratt, followed by Glasgow, which is back on this side. Pratt is at that little bulge in the river there. Glasgow is going to be on this side. And East Bank is just across the river from that. The local folklore claims that the etymology of Glasgow may be a hillbilly mishmash of the words glass and co. as a nod to a big glass factory that used to be down there in the early 1900s. And unfortunately, like all the other towns out here, those two are in the process of dying. And even Charleston, the capital city, and the most populous in the entire state, is also dying. Which we'll be at shortly. Their population's been shrinking since the 1960s up there. And then the 2021 estimate of the population of that town, mind you, the capital city of the state, 48,000 people. And that'll be our final stop on this short little tour. And since it's just ahead, I'll tell you a little bit about it before we arrive. And originally I was going to take off from the town of Lewiston, and I did on one of my test flights because I wanted to fly over the Greenbrier, which is that big, formerly secret bunker where the entire U.S. Congress was supposed to go in the case of a nuclear holocaust. But when I flew out there to check it out, 
everything around the green bar briar was built up as it should be, but the green briar itself was flat. But if you want to check it out yourself, it's really neat. It's tucked up in the mountains there, and Lewisburg's pretty neat. The Virginia State Fairgrounds are up there. I'll show you where that is on the satellite map, too, when we're done. So we're going to be up on Charleston here in just a little bit. The first permanent settlement out here was called Fort Lee, and that was built near the confluence of the Kanaw and Elk Rivers in 1787. So this is the Kanaw here. And the runway we'll be landing on runs parallel to the Elk River, which is much smaller. In the early 1800s, salt became big business out here in Charleston. In fact, thanks to the economic benefits of owning other humans, the adjacent town of Malden would become the biggest salt producer in the world, with roughly 3,000 slaves manning over 60 salt furnaces that operated 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In 1817, the locals found some black rocks in the ground that made much better fuel for the salt ovens than natural gas or wood. And you might think that would be the end of the salt business, but it actually led to a boom in the chemical production business during World War I. Apparently there was a high enough demand for chlorine and sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, both of which are derivatives of salt. I've got the time set at 5 p.m. And I adjusted the clouds a little bit, but this is exactly what West Virginia looked like when I drove through it with all the mist on the hills and stuff. The fog is just, just amazing. Looks just like it. By the time the Civil War rolled around, this part of what was still the state of Virginia at the time had lost their taste for slavery and wasn't as thrilled about succession as their eastern neighbors. On September 13th of 1862, the war came to town at the Battle of Charleston unleashing a torrent of cannon fire from both sides to almost no effect, with a total of 27 casualties from the whole affair. Once the Union ran out of gunpowder and patience, they moved out and left the town to the Confederates, returning six weeks later for a second act, this time driving the rebels out and holding the city for the rest of the war. And the North was very eager to take this region since the war started, however, because they wanted all the coal for the steel factories up along the Ohio River, which aren't too far from here. Well... Back in those days, it would have been very far from here, but flying in this plane wouldn't take us too long to get up there. And as you'll see today, Charleston is still a largely industrial city. And aside from that, the big economic drivers are a few universities and being the capital government positions. So here's where Charleston proper sits. And just to brace you for what we'll see up here, I do have the two freeware add-ons relevant to this flight installed, and one is for the city and the others for the Capitol building, both of which didn't look that great before I added them. But since they're older add-ons, and because no one has messed with them in quite a while, they don't play real nice with, I think, some recent world updates, so you're going to see some weird artifacts in the water once we get by downtown. And all in all, I think it's a net positive, but if you want to sacrifice the buildings for the river, you can leave out the add-ons. Most of the bridges look pretty good. They got some little truss bridges down there. That one obviously looks fantastic. And this is just a big shopping plaza here. They got like a Lowe's and a Best Buy and all that for now until Best Buy goes under, which probably won't take too much longer, judging by what it looked like the last time I was in our local Best Buy. So the first thing I'll point out is the Capitol building, which will be right along the water on this side of the river. It's going to be right down here. And that was dedicated by Governor William G. Connolly on June 20th of 1932. And directly across the river from that is the campus of the University of Charleston. And then back on this side of the river, just north of the Capitol building, we'll spot Laidley Field, which is the stadium for UC Athletics. And just up the road from that is the Gomart Ballpark Baseball Stadium, a.k.a. Appalachian Power Park, which appears to be used by all kinds of local sports clubs, along with the local minor league team, the Charleston Dirty Birds. All right, so let's see what we got here. The University of Charleston, let me peek under my little thing here. It's right down here, and that building up on the hill, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's a hotel or part of the university or what. But we're going to turn here in just a second and probably get a better view of the Capitol. See, there's the Capitol building right there. And it actually has a gold top on it. And if you set the time to, like, noon, you can really see it reflecting up there. Let me see if I can lean out the window to see that stadium. I think we're too close to it. The airport's right here, so you'll see it when we come back in on our left. See what the uh, water's doing down there? 
when I pulled the add-ons back out, the river looked as it should, but the buildings all look terrible, so that's the only detracting artifact with the add-ons. So this big thing up here is called Blaine Island, and that's named after a guy who built a mill on the spot in 1823, and I couldn't determine exactly what he was milling down there, but I did read that the factory was powered by what I'm assuming was a water wheel, because I read that he'd built a dam between the island and the southern bank, somewhere on this side of it here. And today it's owned by Union Carbide, who purchased it in 1927. And it appears a portion of it's also used by the Bayer Corporation today. There's some more bridges down there. See those truss bridges? Those look like big blocks just laying across the river before the add-on. They look pretty good now. And up here is the campus of West Virginia State University, which is going to be right up here. And this is the town of Dunbar. And that area was once a large Native American settlement and was granted to George Washington after the Revolutionary War as a token of thanks for his military service. And in 1883, workers from the Smithsonian started poking around in the area, discovering no less than 50 Indian mounds, likely built in the first 500 years of the current era, only of which two can still be seen today. Look at that. All of it just looks wonderful. Obviously, this is a big industrial center down here. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. If you consider the United States has only existed for around 250 years, the United States proper, obviously people have been here longer than that. And if you think about all the things that have happened over that time, all that's been built, destroyed, rebuilt, and to think that an ancient population was down here doing their thing for twice as long as that, and all that they managed to throw up were 50 piles of dirt. Pretty crazy. So here's the campus right here. And I looked at some of the pictures of the mounds one of them is in a big park that they have down there, but I couldn't really spot it from the air. But there are some pictures of it. And you may have noticed that the color of the vegetation changed a little bit from green to this slightly darker color. And this time of year, I'd imagine that's probably a little more accurate. Maybe even some of the trees are starting to get their fall colors up here. Some beautiful looking athletic fields. Yeah, but I flew up, uh, there's a lot of Civil War sites, there's nothing to see now, but along the Ohio River, if you start in the northern part of the state and come down, a lot of neat towns, but there was just, it would have been a very long flight with a lot of nothing in between our spots, so I took several flights. If you guys have been watching our recent videos, you know it's taken me literally a week or more to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, and I thought this was kind of the best of the rest, what's out here, and it does look good, as you can see. All right, we're going to be coming around for our approach into Jaeger International, Kilo Charlie Romeo Whiskey. And this is going to be a neat landing because it's perched up on a hill, and you have to clear some trees right at the end of the runway as you come in. And for an international airport, it's not very big. The single tarmac is only about 6,700 feet long, and it shares the facility with the 130th Airlift Wing at the McLaughlin Air National Guard Base. And I think they have, according to Wikipedia, eight C-130s. I got stationed out there. And I don't know if you saw it when I looked over our shoulder when we were flying by before, but there used to be a second runway that runs perpendicular to the one we'll be landing on, but they've converted that to a taxiway. And as far as stats for this place go, in 2022, only 9% of the traffic was commercial airline. 15% was for military, and the rest was for general aviation and air taxi services. And though it had already existed for a while, they named the place after then-Brigadier General Chuck Yeager in 1985, who's from the nearby town of Myra, just south of here. And when I looked at that area on the Google map, I had trouble spotting more than just a handful of structures of any kind. It's about as rural as it gets. I'll show it to you at the end. You can see how the trees get a little more green up here. And this stuff down here is another little commercial complex with a Lowe's and other big box stores down there. And it looks good. Really good. And there's a place marker down by Myra for a Jaeger Cemetery. And it looks like it's next to a little ramshackled farmhouse, but Chuck isn't buried there. He's interred at Arlington National. And I'm guessing that is that cemetery is on or near some of his family's land. So if you want to hang out to the end, I'll show you where that is too. 
And I'll show you the green bar. Don't let me forget that. This plane is also a breeze to land. I say that. Hopefully I can pull it off. So there's the Elk River running out there. And that fort, which was the first thing that they built out here, was down here a little bit further. It wasn't right, I don't think. The site for the fort was somewhere around here. They have a little place marker for it. But I don't think it was right at the confluence there. All right, let's start slowing down. And while we're doing that, because I just can't stop thinking about the Peruvian alien mummies they found, as I mentioned in the last video when I said what I thought would probably wind up happening with that news story, though I fully braced myself for it to be a hoax because how many of those things have we seen over the years? I was a little bit disappointed to see how many people are offhandedly calling it a hoax without doing any kind of testing on it, which would be easy enough to do. The guy has offered anyone to come test them all they'd like. And I'm not saying that they'll find that it's genuine when they test it, but the most shocking to me was one of the guys who was one of the whistleblowers up in Washington recently at the congressional hearings that just completely offhandedly, without doing any personal analysis himself, said that it was a massive setback in the whole ufology world. And I thought, you know what? That guy's been battling people, completely dismissing him without doing any research for <laughs> ever since he came out with this whole thing, and now he's doing the same thing to somebody else. And I read one story that the uh, guy that presented those things, again, to the Mexican Congress for some reason, even though he found them down in Nazca, Peru, so he says he did. They said, oh, those aren't genuine. Those were mummies that were stolen from, they're thousand-year-old mummies that were stolen from a museum years and years ago. So, of course, I thought, okay, well, what's the story with thousand-year-old mummies that look like aliens? I'm sure the truth will not come out eventually. All right, we got a slow way down here. I got the throttle just cut. Let's get the gears down. Probably should have done that a long time ago. You can see that other runway crossing it there. It kind of goes off to the right. That's the one that's just a taxiway now. It's a neat little approach here, isn't it? So we're getting some of those weird geometric trees here too, which you can probably see. Yes, I'm opening my flaps way too late. I got so distracted with the alien mummy thing that I just couldn't concentrate. We'll just call those West Virginia rocks there. They're probably coal seams, not geometric trees. Our next flight, by the way, if you're curious, is going to be out in Malta, down by Italy. Very cool, very ancient region. And I feel like now I'm getting some stuttering, which is weird that that would happen now because that has not happened previously. That was way too steep of a descent, but we'll be all right. So the air base, the National Guard Air Base, is down on the northern end of this runway, which is the direction we're pointing right now. Let's give that a little rudder there. And that's it. We'll thump the front gear down here. Get our flaps up. We'll just pull off right over here at the little National Guard area. Sure, they'd love to check this plane out. And we'll check out a little nav map. Yeah, but Malta is just an amazing place. I've seen lots of documentaries about that. I'm hoping we'll be able to see a lot of the old ancient temples and megalithic structures down there, but we'll see. And I think it's comprised of three islands, actually, so I don't know. I think there's a runway only on the southern one, so maybe we'll do a water landing up at the top of the northern one so we don't have to fly all the way back down. And it looks kind of small next to Italy, but... It might be much bigger than I'm imagining once we're in the air, so we'll see. Let's see, where do we want to go here? We'll pull over there by that truck. Looks like a good a spot as any. And I don't know if you noticed the little uh, farmhouses by our departure airport. Just perfect. Exactly what I want to see for West Virginia. Shoot, we could probably squeeze this plane in that little garage door right there. All right, guys, come out and check it out. Take it up for a little flight if you want. Alright, we get our flaps up, parking brake on, kill the engine, hold your ears, mm. get that West Virginia mountain air, John Denver would be proud. Okay, so let's back it up a little bit here, let me show you where I originally had started from, you can see I still have some bookmarks out here, so I left from here, this is uh, Greenbrier Valley Airport. You can see that there. Came up around here, circled over this area. Lewisburg is a neat-looking little town. Not any neater looking than what we saw. But the Virginia State Fairgrounds are here, which look good in the sim, if you feel like checking those out. And here's the Greenbrier over here. 
And this actually looked uh, really good too, this little sports center. And I couldn't figure out what they, they called it an NFL training center on Google. But when I looked at their website, it looks like they host, you know, kids programs, Pop Warner stuff down there. So here's the main huge resort facility. And then this is where the bunker was. All of this looked okay. <laughs> For some reason, this, the one thing anyone in the sim would want to fly over and look at, totally flat. Big bummer. But the hills looked good, really good. So if you feel like flying out there, but it just took quite a while to get all the way over here from there. And before I forget, because we're going to zoom in, and I probably will. So here's where we landed. Here's where Myra is. This whole area out here. This is Lincoln County, I think. And look at this. There's just nothing out here. So I would guess that old Chuck was a farm boy through and through. And then here's the little cemetery down here. That's the Jaeger Cemetery. So I don't know if this was some of their property here. And you can see on Google, which is a little bit clear, that this is all just rusted out and stuff. But he's not buried there. Maybe some of his family members are. He's up at Arlington. All right, so here's where we left from. And although you can't see it in little nav map because I got it blocked out, this is where the hangar is for their little steerman that they take up on that. And you guys have got to check out the website for that that uh, that little Wild Adventures flight thing. It looks amazing. I'll put the link in the description. Came over here and then checked out this huge bridge. There's the town of Fayetteville, which looked a lot better in the sim than it does there because that looks a little bit funky, but that was awesome. And I think that's also got a bookmark in the sim map as well. Pretty much the only thing out here that does. That's Anstead. I didn't know if we'd be flying up there or not, but we didn't. We wouldn't have been able to see that. And then here's that dam, which doesn't look particularly tall. I mean, it was totally flat in the sim, but it didn't look too far off from that. And they definitely changed the water level. And when they built the tunnel where all the guys died inhaling all the silica, I think it tracks right along this little, this is probably a power line quarter right here now, but this is where it spits out over here. So this is where the, the hydroelectric thing was that generated all the electricity. I'm not sure what that is there. Maybe just a holding tank. And what else did I bookmark over here? Oh, there's the mystery hole. Yeah, check it out. So I think it is safe to bring your kids there. It's not what I thought it was. So that would be a neat little spot. Although they said the proprietor was a little bit of a jerk. So don't talk to anyone while you're there. Just watch the, the gravity effects. And here's the town of Glen Ferris where the old hotel was, the inn, where all the Confederate and Union generals stayed. And look at how awesome this falls here probably looks. If you look at some pictures from down at the water level, this is just gorgeous up here. And this is another little hydroelectric plant that they have over here. And then here's where Gauley Bridge is. And that's a newer bridge. That's not the original. That's not the namesake of the town there. And then there's Smithers in Montgomery. No relation to the Simpsons, unfortunately. A coal mine there. And a coal heap here, probably waiting for some barges to take it down the river. There's Pratt, Glasgow, or Glasgow, or Glasgow, if they didn't name it after a glass company. East Bank. And then we came up here to downtown Charleston. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to point that field out again to you guys. Well, if you fly just a little bit further over this way, you can see this crystal clear. This stadium also looks really good. On approach, if you look over here, you can also definitely see it. It's kind of tough to see the baseball stadium on approach, but one of the issues with this plane is it doesn't track, as you can see, directly with the GPS line. It kind of weaves back and forth, and if we'd have been a little bit further over, because I could see it in some of my test flights, we would have been able to spot the field. But there's a Capitol building, and you can see that gold top on it, which with the sun just right is definitely gold in the sim. Here's the University of Charleston, and there's that building there that was sticking up on the side of the hill. Don't know what that was. I should check that out. Blaine Island, where Union Carbide and Bayer now share the landscape and where the guy had the mill at some point in time. And here's West Virginia State, and here's where the mines were, or mines, the mounds were. And let me see if I can spot that park where they said they got them. Well, certainly not that, because that's a golf course. You guys see anything that looks like mounds? That kind of looks like a mound, doesn't it? I wonder if that's it. Yeah, they said they found 50 of them out here, but they had to put up all these tiny little mill towns, so to heck with Indian mounds, tear those suckers down. Let's get some very cheap real estate out here. And there's the uh, West Virginia State University campus, which doesn't look like much. They don't really have any athletic fields or anything other than that. Well, is that a stadium? No, they just got a little track and some baseball fields there. And then we came on in for our approach. And although you can't see it here on the Google Maps, obviously it's crystal clear. They cover it all up with these splotches for a little nav map. But this is the runway that used to be. It's a shorter runway when it was. I think it's like 4,700 feet. But now it's just a taxiway. They use that just for general aviation. This was always the commercial airport. And they said also that they had the FAA made them build some extensions onto these runways at one point in time for safety reasons. But we couldn't notice any of that either. So that's it. You know, as much as I was hesitating on this flight, the landscape was beautiful. The scenery was good. The only detractor, again, were some of those geometric trees and then the stuff going on with the water down here. Not a bad flight. Not bad at all. 
So stay tuned for the Malta Cruise, which will be up next. And if you have any recommendations, I've gotten a few over the last week. Another uh, river down by Belgium, where we took a flight out there, but this would be on the southern, I guess the southwestern part of Belgium. Looks pretty cool, so I'll do a test flight over there. Thank you for that recommendation, as always. And if you have a hometown flyover request, of course, let me know that as well. I'll check that out, too. Been an absolute blast. Had a lot of fun. Learned a lot, as always. Can't wait to see you guys again in the skies. Later.